What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we're going to talk about wire colors. Okay, what do all of the wire colors mean? Why do we have red and purple and yellow and green and white and gray, all these different colors of wires? Well, if you look, we have the same color of tape, so we can mark different uh, wires, different colors to identify them as these colors, but these colors are very specific. So what is it? Why, did, why are there different colors? First off, if all of the conductors were black, how would you know which one's which? There are certain conductors that have uh, different potentials between each other. So we need to be able to identify a conductor that has power on it versus a conductor that doesn't have power on it. But there are very specific points within a circuit that we also need to identify. And it basically just means this wire is a certain thing. This wire has voltage on it relative to another wire or relative to ground, but it's telling us a little bit of information. For the most part, most of the colors are what we call uh, ungrounded conductors or hot conductors. All the hots um, have a, bunch, a whole plethora of different colors, and it depends if you're in a single phase environment, if you're in three phase environment, as to what those colors will be. But pretty standard across the board, we're gonna start out with the green wire. The green is what's known as ground uh, overseas, you know, Europe, things like that. They call it earth, um, but it's the same thing. It's what's tied to earth, to the ground. The reason we call it a ground is because we physically bring a wire from a grounded conductor or a neutral down to the ground and tie that into ground. We, we basically bring the center point of an electrical system down to the ground and touch the ground with it so that the center point of the entire electrical system all the way through the electrical system at every pole along the way, everywhere, is referencing the same point, the same potential essentially. Um, so there's not big large fluctuations between different parts of the electrical system. So we have a common reference point for ground and ground is always green and ground is also earth. So that's not gonna change um, anytime you see a ground conductor or if you see a yellow conductor with ground, uh, green stripes on it, that's another way that they identify ground. Next, we're going to talk about white. White is what we call neutral. Um, it's also what in the code book is called the grounded conductor. Now, there's a difference between a grounding conductor and a grounded conductor gets confusing when you're first trying to start to understand code. Just remember that a hot is ungrounded, meaning it's not touching ground at all. It is a hot wire. We don't want it touching the ground. So ungrounded is hot and grounded is neutral. Hot, neutral, ungrounded, grounded. They both end in ED. The weird one is the one that doesn't have any power on it, and that's the green. That's the one that's the ground wire. So that's how I always remembered. Hot and neutral are ungrounded and grounded, and then ground is the grounding conductor. So anyways, we're talking about the white conductor or the neutral when you're out in the field, nobody's gonna call it the grounded conductor. We're not lawyers, we don't wear suits every day. We're not making up code. We are electricians and we call it a neutral. So the neutral conductor is white, and that's going to be across the entire system, whether you're in single phase or in a three phase environment, that's the wire that is the center point between uh, two different phases, three different phases, or if you're in a single phase environment, basically you have two hots or you have three hots, two ungrounded or three ungrounded conductors. But the center point of all of those where the transformer is tapped to be able to cut all of your voltages from 240 volts down to 120 volts, you have to have the center point that you can tap off of. So to identify that center point in the system, we call it a neutral and we tape it white so that we know that every other conductor in that system is going to have a certain voltage to this one reference point. So the grounded conductor and grounding conductor or the 
neutral and the ground should be at the same potential. When you have a meter and you're, you're on your voltage setting and you go between a white and a green, there should not be any voltage between them. It should, your meter should read zero volts. If it doesn't and it reads like 40 volts, there's a problem. But we need to know what the green and the white mean because the green and the white shouldn't have voltage on them. And then when you look at a white compared to a red, a white compared to a blue, a white compared to a black, we know that those colors mean there should be a certain voltage between those conductors. So I know that between a black and that white, there should be probably 120 volts. 110, 115, somewhere in that ballpark. That's what I would expect. A red and a white, same thing. A blue and a white, same thing. Um, because in a three-phase system, you're, you're going to have voltages that are between one hot and neutral, you're gonna have voltages that are between one hot and ground, and you're gonna have voltages that are between one hot and another hot. So the, the other reason why we would have blue or black or red is that each one of these hots needs to be identified as, as to which phase it is, which incoming leg of the system it is. So we know if we've got the black conductor that all the way up to the pole and going back to the utility, that black conductor is our A phase. And then we've got a red conductor. We know that that one goes back and that's the, I guess the middle phase or the, not really the middle phase. If there's three phases, they're all equidistant. But you get what I'm saying. The black, the red, and the blue represent which incoming wire has potential in relative to another hot wire. So the black, the red, and the blue are usually three phase colors. In single phase, like you have in a house, you're just gonna have black and red. So that's how you know when you open up a, a panel whether or not you have single phase or three phase. Single phase is just gonna be a black and a red and then you're obviously gonna have your neutral and your ground, your white and green. You're gonna have those everywhere. Um, but then if you go to three phase, you're gonna have black, red, and blue as your three hots and you're gonna have your white and your green for your neutral and your ground. The next color we're gonna talk about is orange. So orange is something that you're probably rarely going to come across, but you will come across sometimes in residential, sometimes in commercial, but it's older three phase systems. In a three phase environment, typically you're gonna have three hots and those three hots all have the same voltage between all of them. And usually they're gonna all have volt the same voltage to ground or neutral from hot to ground or neutral. The orange tells you that's not the case. It's almost like a warning or danger um, for, for that color choice, because it means one of those hots actually has 208 volts to ground. So if you were to take your multimeter and go like A phase to B phase, you're gonna hit 240 volts. If you go B phase to C phase, 240 volts. C phase to A phase, you're gonna get 240 volts. Nothing weird there. The orange doesn't affect that. It's only once you start testing to ground from each one of these hots. So from phase A to ground, you're gonna have 120 volts, just like you should, like you would think. C phase to ground, you're gonna have 120 volts, but that B phase that's marked orange is gonna have 208 to ground. That's really important to know because if you were to start putting uh, a whole bunch of wires into a panel and just landing them all like you normally would, just one breaker at a time, fill in every single spot, top to bottom, everywhere that you have B phase in that panel, you're gonna have 208 to ground. So say that one of those wires that you've got hooked up to one breaker that is pushing 208 through it, you hook a vacuum cleaner that's rated at 120 volts and you run 208 through it, you're gonna fry that vacuum cleaner. TVs, anything like that that's not rated for 208 volts, you're gonna fry. So this happens often. I mean, uh, it's, it's just one of those things that people don't really know what that orange means until you learn the hard way or until somebody you know teaches you. Um, so watch out for the orange thing. Orange kind of just means danger. Uh, something's different here. Need to know something's crazy here. Now I will say that there are some higher voltage systems, some like 480 and up systems that utilize orange in their color. Depending on where you're at in the country, you could come across a three phase system that's 480 volts and the colors are brown, yellow, purple. Or brown, orange, yellow. Now that orange in a, in a higher volt system, that's a 480 volt system, doesn't mean the same thing when it's in a 480 volt system. It's just one of the three hot colors. So there's no difference in voltage between any of those things. That's why some cities don't use that color nomenclature. Some 
cities prefer doing brown, yellow, purple. I think most do, but there's just some weirdo cities out there that like to do brown, orange, yellow. Brown, yellow, and purple usually mean that you're working with a voltage system that's higher than a typical three phase voltage system. So uh, it's not necessarily medium voltage or high voltage. A lot of electricians call uh, the black, red, blue, they call that low voltage and then they call high voltage brown, yellow, and purple. It just means that instead of you having 240 volts from hot to hot, like you would on the black, red, blue, on the brown, yellow, and purple, you're gonna have 480 volts between each one of your hots. And you're also gonna have 277 volts between uh, each one of the hots and neutral or each one of the hots and ground. So it's a little bit higher voltage system. Um, most of your equipment is gonna be 600 volt rated for this environment, whereas before you were at 250 volt rated. Um, so it's just a different class of equipment, different class of gear, higher voltage going through everything. So you need to know that because it's a little bit more dangerous. It's a lot more dangerous to be working on this stuff. So that was, oh, and another one, we have the gray conductor. So anytime you see a gray conductor or something taped gray, usually that's to let you know that in a 480 volt system, that's the neutral conductor or the grounded conductor. So gray for 480 volt system is the same as white for a 240 volt system. White and gray just mean neutral, but it's just for two different systems. Now there are some places that you're gonna see different colors than this, um, or you're gonna see some of these same colors mixed into things and they don't mean the same thing. For instance, if you have ballasts, if you're like working in a fluorescent fixture or an LED fixture, <clears throat> you're gonna open up and see one side of that ballast has a black and a white conductor. The other side of the ballast usually has two reds, two blues, and two yellows, or a red, blue, yellow, depending on what kind of ballast it is. But red, blue, and yellow are ballast leads. And it's just basically telling you what are my two supply or line side conductors and which is my load coming back into the ballast. And there's wiring diagrams that actually show you what color is what part of the circuit. So in that situation, these colors don't mean the same things. It's just a way for them to identify the outgoing and incoming. Another thing that you're probably gonna find in uh, lighting control systems that are colored conductors are um, dimming wires. So there's some ballasts out there um, that you can remotely dim a load from a different location and there's two extra conductors that go up into light fixtures um, and they will have inside the fixture somewhere for these wires to land and a lot of times these are purple and gray conductors so a lot of higher end light fixtures will come with uh, a set of dimming leads already in the fixture or you'll come across these um, T5s are a good example a lot of T5 ballasts T8 ballasts that have these little uh, inputs so that you can put dimming wires in them. Or if you're ever up in like a whole row of fixtures in a shopping center or something like that, and you see these um, purple and gray conductors that are usually a little bit smaller, they're usually like the size of ballast leads, uh, you just know that this is remote dimming. So somewhere there's a lighting control system that is um, sending a dimming signal rather than uh, a regular dimmer would just you know start to change um, the nature of the circuit so that it starts to dim. Uh, these actually have constant power to the fixtures, but they send a remote signal to start to dim uh, the power. So it just works a little bit differently. So that's pretty much it for the colors. Um, they're really just I, telling you this wire has this potential in comparison to this wire or this is this place in the system and these are the other things in the system. It's actually telling you information so that you don't miswire something and accidentally blow something up or, or get somebody hurt. You need to be, you know, even if you're wiring like speakers, there's always a black and a red conductor so that you know what your positive and your negative is because you need to know in relation to one or the other. Um, and, and, you know, in that situation, a speaker might not actually work if you flip those wires in a, a house or a commercial building or an industrial <laughs> environment, you mix up your wires, you could blow something up, create a fire, kill somebody. So it's really, really important to be able to identify conductors and know which conductors that you're working with. So just to review, the green is the ground, the white and the gray are the neutral, black, red, and blue mean three phase, black and red mean single phase, um, but they're usually 240 volts or less. 
Orange means that you've got one conductor that's 240 volts to ground where all the other hot conductors are gonna be 120 to ground. So it's kind of like orange is like a hazard color, it's a warning. And then you've got your high voltage stuff. Um, already said the neutral is gray, um, but you have either brown, orange, yellow, uh, boy, that's how I remember that, uh, in weird places, but the majority of people are doing brown, yellow, purple, um, and that's BIP, BYP, that's how I remember the, the order of them and what phase order that they go in. But that's it. So thank you guys so much for sitting through that. It was probably really boring. I love you crazy people. Make sure that you hit subscribe, like the videos. If you like this stuff, it really helps me out. I would appreciate it. Um, thanks for all the support. If you're interested in merch, go to my website. Link's in the description below. If you're looking for some practice tests and you actually want to try to take a practice test, not just flip through a book and answer questions, but, but test yourself and take a practice test, check out another link in the description below. Go to electricianu.com and uh, you can actually take practice tests for your residential wireman's license, your journeyman's license, and your master license. Love you crazy people, and I'll see you in the next one.